Well, hello everybody, Vicky here. I hope everybody is well. I'm doing number three and number four in my 100 day makes. I'm doing it all in one um, video today because I got the beginnings of number three that you're looking at and I've got the end of number three. But the middle of it saved in some sort of funky format that iMovies just does not want to recognise and neither Graham nor I can figure out what on earth went wrong with it. So rather than losing weeks ripping my hair out or doing it all over again, I've decided just to show you the bits of number three that I've got. So as you can see today, my make are three and four. So if I'm doing this sort of thing, I like to do two at a time because I've got the inks and everything out. So why not do two? So as you saw, I smooched the background with the oxide ink pads and I'm just backing this onto a piece of manila folder that I dyed. I got the patterns by using the plastic doilies. Now, um, what I did with this is the yellow brick wall that is sitting on, that's um, been embossed and then I've run a an ink pad just slightly over the top of it to bring the bricks out and you saw me doing the the wash to get the background and I've stamped on it and I also have done some stenciling it's it's pretty subtle it's all for background so none of it stands out a huge amount and then I like to ink around what my tags or what I'm doing for me, it, it's a visual that sets a frame around it. And I thought that that um, Holtzman, it's quite dapper sitting on that wall. I'm sorry about the noise behind me. It, it's the air con. I will be saying that every every day until, I don't know, maybe the March, the end of March. I also like putting the gold um, around the edge of it as well. I'm going through my gold phase, it would see. I'm quite, in, I'm quite enjoying it all. So that's number three, short and sweet, but there it is. So I have, I have number four coming up, like right now, and we go right through the process. So I'm just smooching, I'm just showing you this, so you know the colours that I've used. But I don't need to sort of like have too much footage on this because I think we're all pretty well up for speed with with how we use our oxides and how versatile they are. So I'm just spritzing the water now just to get and just here we go. So getting all sorts of yummy on the on the tag and I'm using a watercolour paper. I think it's about a 150 GSM possibly maybe a 120 I'm just not quite sure so now I'm just trying to get little bits of different color um, in in a spot so just trying not to get too much more of, of what I think is gathered twigs and and get get a little bit of the other two in there so keep in mind that when we're doing this it looks quite you know sort of like in your face the color but as it dries it, it does fade and it looks really, really pretty. So we'll just dry that off now and we'll go on to what we're going to do next. So I've decided that because it's like I love I love the tag, I love the, the, the cut the texture that's there just by the way the watercolours picked up the oxide ink. So before I do anything else I thought I will put the splatters on first. I've done gold splatters, you can see them just shining there as I do the white. I didn't think that the, you, we needed to have both of the gold and the white splatters on, on video. What I'm doing with the white is what I did with the gold, just mixed it with some water and then we've got it dry now. So I've mixed a couple of um, oxides there is there a lime something or other and speckled egg just to get that colour um, to blend really well with the colours that are on the tags. So I'm just using a little foam brush and I'm going around 
and putting the stencils on and then that's my my next layer so we go from lightest to darkest because all this is pushed back into the ground into the background as we go and it, it just gives opportunity to be able to do a little bit more on there other than just the 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 stamps that are going to come and that's a stenciling brush there and I do recommend you use that rather than the the paint the um what do they call them the, you know like the tim hot blending the blending tools blending tools will sort of like the going across the plastic of the stencil it it the, it will um like work as a cheese grater on your foam so if you've got a brush it's much better and I the coverage as well so now i'm going to be i'm just doing some stamping this is a stamp as anonymous and it's just rows of i think i think the alphabet i think they're letters and i'm just sort of stamping that around and now we've got a little uh square like a little grid and i really really like it so i'm just just trying to get some ink on that so that when i put it down it's not going to be too too um in your face like too bold but i do want to be able for it to be seen because I think it just adds that nice little extra, like, distressed look, I guess. And I like stamping. The biggest, the biggest hurdle with all of these is, is knowing when to stop. <laughs> I mean, it is so much fun as we go along. We're sort of, like, looking for something else to do. Now, I didn't have it. I forgot to turn the camera on. But you can see a white flower. That's been stenciled on with a little bit of gesso and it's been lightly done because I want that in the background. And you can see that um, this is another stamp as anonymous stamp. Um, I, that, that is the focal point. Now, when I took that off, I thought, hmm, that's not really a very clear, crisp image and I was going to stamp it again. But I decided not to because the tag has got a really sort of like vintage vibe to it. I um, thought that maybe that by putting a really crisp stamp on there, it might look a little bit like oranges and apples, you know. One doesn't sort of match the other one. So I'm still finding places to put a little bit of a stamp. Now, this is what I've got here is a little music stamp and because it's just one line and it's quite a small stamp I've decided to use the stamping platform so the stamping platform just doesn't have to be for to, to do more prints and build a, an image up it, it can be used for when you've got these little stamps that are a little bit difficult to deal with and I find it easy just to do it on the platform than put it on a block, an acrylic block, plus the fact that the platform was right near my elbow. So I thought, you know what, why not? So I'm just doing all sorts of little things. And this is this made, this one made me chuckle. It looks like a rocket. Uh, it's got words or letters or something on it, but it's so tiny it's a bit hard to tell whether I do believe it's it's um, letters and it just I don't know made me laugh so I thought you know what why not pop the pop that on as well just just because <laughs> just because it's funny now I did leave the stamp the the tag on the platform even when I wasn't using the platform because it's a nice surface to be able to stamp on. So I wanted I wanted branches coming down from the top, and I didn't I don't actually have a stamp with like just little branches coming off, very little foliage. So I thought, hmm, it's a bit bare up there. So I had to do something. So I've turned a flower inside out. That bit that you can see going behind it is the stem, and if you're an Australian. You will, because of our um, flora, you, 
you can actually see that and, and think that maybe it's like one of our gum trees with the seeds and, and, and the, the seeds starting to pop and having, having a little bit of the white. Oh, what did we used to call them? I remember, well, I remember when I was a child, there was dandelion puffs or something. It, it, this just looks like it, they've all exploded and it's, and it's very lost time. I've never, I haven't given those little things a thought. I think when, the, when the dandelion flower, when the pet, petals come away, there's a little round ball. And we used to find them when we were kids and, I don't know, we'd blow on them. and we'd, I guess a bit like you're playing with a balloon, only on a very scaled down uh, version of it. But, yeah. So now what I'm doing is, is I'm just um, stenciling with the white, um, a, sort of like a half of that stencil, just to just to take the, the sort of blankness out of that spot there. I'm not sure why I thought the need to do it on this side, because there will be um, a sentiment to go there. So I've got my inks out, and my um, ink nib. And I'm just going to draw some circles, just freehand circles, uh, and and um, just just for effect, to fill in there, and something for my saying to go on the top. So just just doing a little bit, so so it doesn't look like the the sentiment has just been dumped down on the crowd on the tag. So I'm just doing the same thing now with one of my my pens. I'm going around and around in black uh, just to define a little bit more. And I'm really liking the way it's come up. And then after I've done that, I've got my, my paint pen out and I'm doing dots. Now be warned, once you start doing <laughs> once you start doing these dots, it's a question of when do we stop? We just keep going. It's so much fun. Who'd have thought? I think it might be time to get into mandalas because um, I, I like all things dot. So I think it would be quite fun. But of course, like everybody else, it's going to, we all have this ever, ever, never, ever ending list of things that we would like to do. I don't know about you ladies, but I'm just constantly always seeking to find new things I can learn to do. How can I do it a bit differently? All that sort of thing. And so like, well, if I just stop thinking about what could and couldn't and, and, and everything else, it's just, just pick one thing and do it. Just do it. So that's what's happened with uh, Hope, the journal, Hope, my journal, is... I am not allowed to look at another journal in in the context of making them until I start making some of the ones that I've prepped. And prepped means that I've attached the fabric to to the to um the the watercolor paper that I use, and I have some signatures. And they're all just sitting like that in the cupboard waiting for me to get to them. So I do one thing at a time and do it well. That's what my husband's always said. Because I've always... It is, isn't it, us mums, or those of us who have been mums, we can do more than one thing at once. And we can also see things that when they're going to go pear-shaped, don't we? This is like the, instinctively we know when to be ready to catch... So now I've just got the little butterfly and uh, I've put the little cotton feelers on him like I've shown you in other videos and I'm just now going to go around and ink it. And with that, I would like to say thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, would you please give me a thumbs up? Be kind to you and please be kind to the person that's standing next to you.